When I was a kid, I was always messing around with rope, building tree houses and other things. I noticed very early on that if you stretch a rope, say between two trees, in this case I'm using two small trees to get uh, so you can see the movement in them. But it was much easier to pull on the tree just by pushing down on this. Doesn't take that much force to get movement compared to pulling, say, straight like that. And uh, so recently I decided to take another look at that and uh, see if we could actually measure those forces and um, do a little trigonometry on it and try to explain it with some simple math. That's what we're going to do next. All right. This is a, a diagram of our rope between two trees we had out there in the woods. And if we push down on the rope with some force, um, the rope deflects, comes down to some point here, and, and creates an angle between the horizontal and, and where its position is here. We're going to assume this is static and not moving. You can represent this with a right triangle. And uh, for a right triangle, theta is this angle over here. And a sine of that angle is going to be equal to the opposite or the hypotenuse. The opposite being A, hypotenuse C here. Now A is going to be the force we push down here divided by 2. Since it's uh, suspended on both sides, that will be half of that force that I push down with. And when we rearrange that, we get the tension here in this rope is going to be equal to the force divided by 2 times the sine of theta, uh, or basically uh, half of the force divided by the sine of theta. Now, the reason I want to point this out is when theta is a very shallow angle, when you first start pushing it, the sine of theta uh, approaches zero. And since it's in the denominator, that means the tension is going to approach infinity. We're never really going to get there, but it's going to be a, a big number with a shallow angle. And this is why it's hard to pull a rope or cable straight and why you usually have a catenary sag in power lines, that sort of thing. So we're going to make some measurements in the shop and, uh, and see what we've got. This is a protractor. It just basically will, it will stay pointing up depending on, yeah, you know, it's on gravity. It's a real handy device to have. Okay, important point I need to make is that I teared all these scales in this configuration but, uh, at each angle. They're all zero now, as you can see. So I've got this scale here hanging on this cable. That's actually paracord. And this scale and that scale, they're all teared to zero before I hang the weights on there. All right, this is our low angle setup. Our scale here is reading 1.42 pounds. These scales are accurate to plus or minus 0 0.02 pounds. 2.48, 2.46. Our angle is, our angle is right at about 16, 17. It's about 17. So we'll do a little calculations and see how close that comes. Okay, this was uh, for our 17 degree angle. Um, that's this angle here. Uh, we measured 2.48 pounds. Our weight hanging on it was 1.42 pounds, positioned in the center. Uh, the sine of that 17 degrees is equal to 0.29. And we divide that into half of that weight, and we end up with 2.43 pretty close to 2.48. With the inherent errors in our measurements, I'd say that's pretty close, so we'll live with that. Okay, we changed our angle, lengthened the, the uh, paracord up there so we get a much steeper angle. And uh, we'll show you what we're reading here. We're reading 1.42 there, 1.02 there, 0.9, there. A little bit off. Let's see if we can affect that. This protractor here is reading right at 45. 
We're reading right at 45 there. 1.42 on this weight, 1.00, and 1.00 there. Okay, we'll do the calculations and see how that compares. Okay, this one we had our angle was steeper, it was 45 degrees. Um, sine of 45 degrees, 0 0.707. Weight was same, 1.42, so we divide half the weight by the sine of the 45. We end up 1.004. Too many decimal points, but uh, I'd say that's pretty much the same thing, so we'll live with that. Okay, here we've got no mechanical advantage. The angle up here is just 90 degrees, and we just have a weight suspended uh, on the bottom, same amount of weight. We're reading, let's see here, 1.42 pounds. These two are both reading 0.72. Should be 0.71, but uh, due to the, um, uh, the plus or minus 0 0.02 pounds accuracy, I think we'll live with that. So, hope you, so basically, when you've got no mechanical advantage, just you're just suspending the weight between two different... Uh, points. It's just that weight on the bottom divided by 2. Okay, here we had uh, 90 degrees. Basically, the weight just suspended by two separate ropes. Uh, no angle, really. Um, the sign of 90 is 1. We measured 0.72 on each of these. Our weight was, again, 1.42. So we divide uh, 0.71 by um, the sine of 90, which is 1, we end up with 0 0.71. Since we can only measure to plus or minus 0 0.02, we're going to live with that. That's pretty close. Now, all this was looking too good. I thought, you know, my, usually things I do don't come out this close. So I rearranged the ropes and the position of everything and redid some a couple of them, and we'll see what that looked like. Okay, I've changed our angles a little bit. Still got the same weight, 1.42 grams. Uh, we're measuring uh, 1.64 here. Here we go, 1.64 grams. And this one on the other side is 1.64. Only way you can get that is to get this weight in the middle just exactly halfway between here. Another important point, um, nothing's ever exactly perfect as in anything in life, much less this. If you look, see the weight of the scales causes the paracord to sag slightly in the middle. So what angle do I use? Do I use this angle or do I use an angle where I'm more approximating a straight line across there? Or in that case, I'm measuring about 25, nope, that's not right, about 25 or so, and there I was reading 20, 26-27. There is always a certain amount of inaccuracy in it, plus or minus 0 0.02 grams weighing this, plus or minus 0 0.02 grams in either one of those, trying to get the angle measured right with this, uh, protractor there is a certain amount of error there so I feel like anything that's in reasonable proximity to the numbers that uh, we calculate is a reasonable comparison okay here we made a little discovery that uh, the sag of the uh, digital scale on the paracord here our rope uh, was causing angles to be slightly off so what it did was measured the angle like I had been without the, uh, just either here or there. Without the level, I measured 27 degrees. And with the level, getting a straight line across here, 25 degrees. Okay, the weight again was 1.42. We measured 1.64 pounds. The uh, calculated tension without the level was 1.56, a little lower than the 1.64. We got the straight line across there, eliminated the sag, but the level, we got sine 25, and we end up, do the calculation, at 1.68. Closer to our measured number, so we're gonna live, live with that.
So we'll go on and do one more. All right, we have a much steeper angle here. Still got the same 1.42 grams there, 0.88 there, 0.88 there, 53. I said around 50 that way. So 53 using the straight line. All right, let's take a look. We'll calculate that and see how close we came. And uh, let's take a little closer look at these. As you can see here, we're reading 0.88. And over here, 0.88. I feel lucky when both of those read the same number. So um, here we were 50 to 53 degrees. We 50 without the level, 53 degrees with it. We measured our tension with the digital scale at 0.88 pounds. Our weight again was 1.42. Um, so our, our half of that divided by the sine of 50 Without the level was 0.766, we calculated 0.927. A little higher than a 0.88. With the level where we got the straight line across here, avoided that sag, we had a 53 degree angle. Sign of that is 0.799, do the calculation, got a 0.89. So that's close enough considering inherent error with what we're doing. So, um, this, I hope this shows you uh, how you can do this sort of thing. Hope you got some use out of it. And uh, if you did, please like the video and subscribe to our channel. Thank you.